Hi everyone, it's Robin and welcome back. So today I am participating in a vintage recipe collab hosted by Rachel from Sweet and Simple Home and Nicole from Nicole North Garden. There's also a few other um, YouTube friends of mine who are joining in. So I will have a handy dandy playlist for you guys down in the description box as well as listing out everyone's names and their channels and a link to their channel. All listed there for you to use if you would like, which I highly recommend once you're done watching this video to go pop over and see what everyone else has made as well. So the challenge for today was to find a vintage cookbook, which I have a few of those in my collection of vintage books, and then pick out a few recipes to share with everyone. Um, I right now am very much loving the 1940s. So I went through my stash of books and I found two cookbooks, both published in the 1940s. So I found three recipes which I'm going to be sharing with you today, all of which seem very easy to make, which makes me very happy because I am not much of a cook. <laughs> I think like things to be very simple and easy and not too putsy, if that makes sense. So the first cookbook I'm using today is the American Woman's Cookbook. And it looks like this. It was published in 1938, 1939, and in 1940 and I love this book look at how big it is oh this has got like everything from like how to make toast to like you know making prime rib and that sort of thing I actually have made quite a few recipes from this book already and I just love like some of the simple recipes that they have in here it is just amazing so I'm loving this cookbook and I'm sure that the recipes that I'm going to use out of this book will turn out quite well. The other cookbook I'm using today is the Hamilton Ross Modern Cookbook. It looks like this. It has a beautiful spine on it and this was also published in 1940. So of the three items I'm making today, one will be a dessert, one will be a sandwich, and one will be a breakfast item. So I'm going to start off today with making the dessert item from the Hamilton Ross Modern Cookbook. Um, I decided to make a chocolate cream pie. I've never made a cream pie before, but it's a very basic um, ingredient and it doesn't look very hard. So I'm gonna give it a whirl and see what happens. <laughs> Plus, it's got chocolate in it, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> so let me show you the ingredients and then we will get started on this little adventure. For, so the ingredients for the chocolate custard cream pie are two cups of milk, four egg yolks, a half a cup of sugar split, a half a cup of flour. It also calls for a half a square of sweet chocolate, which I don't have on hand, but I do have milk chocolate chips. So I'm hoping that that will do the trick. <laughs> we shall see. Um, which I probably have way too many chocolate chips, but We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think it'll be a horrible thing if it ends up a little extra chocolatey. The recipe also calls for a half a cup of butter along with a pre-baked pie crust, which I have already gone ahead and done, and that is cooling off on the over on the counter on the other side of the room, as well as a cream whipped topping. So let's go ahead and get started mixing this up. To get started, I used my mixer to mix up the egg yolks until they're nice and fluffy. And while this was happening, I warmed up my milk in a saucepan until it was steamy but not boiling. I set that aside off the heat and then I added the sugar into the egg yolks and then finally the flour as well. I used a spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl a few times whenever I thought it needed it. Once the yolk mixture was mixed together nicely, I started adding in the milk. You want to be careful to only add a small amount of the milk in the beginning so that it won't curdle the eggs that are in the egg yolk mixture. So I just kept mixing and adding small amounts of the milk until I had all of the milk incorporated into the yolk mixture. Scraping down the sides of the bowl as needed and continuing to mix the mixture together. Thank you. 
Once it was well mixed together, I transferred it into a saucepan. Then over medium low heat, I started heating up the mixture. This requires a lot of stirring. In the very beginning, just a little bit of mild stirring, and then as the mixture starts to thicken, you'll want to do some more stirring because it's getting hotter and you don't want anything to scald. Once it's nice and thick, you'll remove it from the heat, at which point you'll want to add the butter and stir that into the mixture, followed by the chocolate. And as you can see, I decided to go ahead and use all of the chocolate chips that I had set out. Once all the chocolate chips have melted into the custard, I simply poured it into the pie shell that was pre-cooked. And then I used my spatula to smooth it out a bit. And from there, I popped it into the refrigerator to cool off and to firm up a bit. I have let the chocolate custard pie sit in the refrigerator so it's nice and cool and firmed up so now it is time to add the whipped cream I totally cheated and bought some instead but I splurged and got the extra creamy <laughs> so we're just gonna add this to the top of the pie as per the instructions on the recipe and I'm gonna add a lot because my kids like the whipped cream And done. Voila! Yummy. So the next thing we're going to make today is from the American Woman's Cookbook. And we're going to make something called Fluffy Eggs. It seems like it's kind of a spin-off of... Maybe like the toast with the egg cooked in the middle of it. It's slightly different. It has intrigued me. And I think it's something that my kids would like a lot. So we're going to give it a whirl. So let me show you the ingredients that we need for this. All right, so for this recipe, uh, it's basically however many servings you want is how many pieces of bread and how many eggs you would like. So I'm going to make two servings. So I have two pieces of bread and I have two eggs, which I have split. I um, removed the egg whites and reserved the egg yolks inside their shells for later. And then we also have shredded cheese. I'm using a Colby Jack today because that is my favorite. And then we also have salt and pepper and a little bit of paprika along with some butter. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is get out a baking sheet and then we're going to butter our bread. I think we just buttered on one side. It really doesn't say it just says butter the bread. So I'm assuming the side that goes down should be buttered just so it doesn't stick to the pan. Makes sense to me. All right. So we got that there. And then we top with some cheese. Just sprinkle a little on there. I like that. Like so, and then we're going to put this off to the side for now. Moving over to the mixer, we're going to put our egg whites into the bowl. We're also going to take a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And a good lot of pepper. So then we're going to whisk this together until it's stiff and fluffy. So we've got our egg yolk all fluffy now and we're going to just kind of heap it on top of here like this I guess 
I don't really know how much each gets, but I like that, basically. Alright, and then we make a little well in the middle. And then we add the egg yolks into the holes. Like so. And then we garnish with more of the cheese. I don't know if it's going to taste good, but it sure does look interesting. All right. So now we put it into the oven at 350 degrees. The recipe says to cook until the cheese is brown and the eggs are set. I have no idea what that means, but I think I'm going to put it in for, I don't know, five, ten minutes maybe? I don't know. We'll see. We'll put it at five and then we'll double check. But it's kind of hard to see the egg when it's covered with cheese. Oh well, we'll figure it out. All right, so in the oven it goes. So the last recipe I'm gonna share with you today is a sandwich and it is called a peanut butter and pickle sandwich. It is from the American Woman's Cookbook but it was also from my childhood. My mother used to make them for me when I was a child, and her mother used to make them for her. So it's kind of, I guess you could call it a family recipe as well. And I have looked for this recipe in cookbooks ever since I started collecting vintage cookbooks. And this book is the only one that I've ever found it in, which I thought was really, really cool. Over the years, I've mentioned how much I've liked this sandwich to like friends and stuff and everyone thinks it just sounds horrible but oh my goodness they are so so good I love them so I'm going to share with you how to make it today it's very simple so let's get started so for this sandwich you just need some basic supplies to any type of bread that you want two pieces some peanut butter and some pickles these are just the regular hamburger dill pickles or you can get like the pickle planks or you can just slice up regular old pickles um, I also like to sometimes use the little teeny tiny pickles that are super crunchy. Those are good too. So to get started, I'm going to lightly toast the bread. I think it makes the sandwich even better. That is not listed in the recipe, but I think it's a nice improvement on it. So I'm going to go take my bread and lightly toast it. Once the bread is toasted, we just add a nice thick layer of peanut butter to each side of the bread. Then we add our pickles. And then I like to cut it in half. And oh, yummy. Peanut butter pickle sandwiches. Yummy. So those are the three recipes that I made to share with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's kind of fun for me, a little something different on my channel. Um, I will make sure to type up all of the recipes and have those in the description box for you in case you are wanting to give these recipes a go of your own. As a side note, the fluffy eggs, my husband 
saw what I was making, sat down in the kitchen and watched me finish putting them together. And then he waited impatiently for them to come out of the oven. And then he gobbled them up. He said they were delicious. And he does suggest adding a little bacon to the mix next time I make them, which he definitely wants me to make those again. They're kind of fun. I thought that was, I was very intrigued by that recipe and they turned out really cool. I've never seen egg yolks used like that before and then, I don't know, it was just really neat. So anyways, that was a fun recipe and I myself ate the peanut butter and pickle sandwich because oh, I love them so much. And then the pie we are saving for tomorrow night after dinner for our dessert, but I did sneak a little bit of the filling and it's pretty delicious. I did use a half a bag of the chocolate chips. I think if I ever make it again, I'll use the whole bag because yes, it's chocolatey, but in my estimation, it's not chocolatey enough. <laughs> um, so I think all three recipes turned out very nicely. I'm very happy with them and I would definitely suggest giving them a whirl if you're at all interested. So now I am hoping that you will take advantage of the playlist in the description box and go check out everyone else's channels and see what they have made to share with you. Um, it should be a lot of fun. I'm excited to go over and check out everyone's channels as well. And of course, while you're over there, make sure you give them a little love down in the comment section. I would appreciate that very much. That would be oh so lovely of you to do that. All right, I guess that is gonna be it for me today. Thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I appreciate it as always. And until the next video, have yourself a great day and I will see you very soon. Bye now.